Hey guys, welcome back to this brand new video. Today I'm going to show you how to make a GTA 5 thumbnail. Now, GTA 6 should just be around the corner, somewhere in early 2025, I believe. But I thought I never really did a tutorial on how to make a GTA 5 thumbnail. But first, guys, if you want, you can go down on this video in the comment section and click on the first comment that I pinned. This will bring you to my Fiverr, and here you can get a YouTube logo and banner, or a modern minimalist YouTube logo and banner for your YouTube channel. But now back to the video. Now I'm actually in Photoshop here, but you can also do this in, for example, Photopea. Now Photopea is you can use that for free in a web browser. I actually show you that up in the right corner here in the video. There's a tutorial that you can check out if you want to follow along and you don't have Photoshop, for example. But anyway, now we're going to jump right in. I'm just going to go to File here and go to New. Now here, the width and height, I advise you to do 920 pixels by 1080. That's actually every thumbnail. With a resolution of 300, you can go for, be sure it's RGB color. The background doesn't really matter, but I like it to be white. And then you can just go ahead and click OK here. Just gonna zoom out once here. So I actually prepared some images, so I'll just get them right now. So I'm gonna start off with our background right here. Just make this slightly bigger here, just to be sure. Place it in the middle. And there you go. So now what I've seen a lot in GTA thumbnails is that they like to put the squares, so like a border around the thumbnail. So it's gonna do as well. So I'm just gonna go here. As you can see here, I just made a shape right here in shapes. And what I'm gonna do is actually choose the reddest color. So I'm just gonna go right here. Click OK. Same this one, we have to make sure that's actually in the middle. And so then you want to make sure that this one is actually you select this one right here. And then here we're going to select this. And as you can see, it becomes a border. And I think I'm actually going to do 30 for the border and going to make that red as well. Just like the thumbnail, because the thumbnail itself is going to be red. So we get, kind of want to stay in the theme right here. So as you can see, we have a little beginning here. There's something to work off. So I'm just going to hide this for the moment because we don't really need that much right now. So then I'm actually going to get my second image right here. It's going to be the logo. Now don't worry, the resolution will be higher after I uh, actually place the logo. So I'm just going to put it in this corner right here. Don't want to make it too big and not too small either. You can also check from a distance right here how it looks from afar. Because most people of course are going to see this on like uh, phones. So yeah, the thumbnails are going to be smaller. And you're going to see it more from a distance. So always be sure to regularly check like for example down here how it's going to look from, from afar really. Okay, so we also have to keep in mind the border. So let's see here. I guess this is good for now. Let's just check with the border. Yeah, that's quite nice. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, then I'm just going to put this over there. And to get it out of the way, also the third image. As you can see here, it's a character. Now, I do it more based on GTA 5 Online here. So um, that's why I'm using more like the, the online characters and features you can get. So basically, I'm just going to turn this... There we go, horizontal. And because it's quite big, I'm going to put them in a corner, like aiming at the logo, if you will, in a way. Let's see here. Also going to put a bit more down. There we go. I think it looks nice. And with the border around it, as you can see, oh, we're going to place them underneath. There we go. Actually going to make them a little bit bigger. There we go. At least then here, you know, it cuts off when the characters are here, right here. So what I actually also wanted to do with the logo here, now that I have the right size for it, is actually add a perspective. I kind of want it to look like it's pointing towards the character. There you go, something like that. There you go, I like that. I think I'm gonna keep it like this, to just play around the border a bit here. There you go, same for the character. Okay, so I'm actually gonna put the logo right here. So I'm actually gonna do some, some changes here. So I'm gonna go to adjustments up here. And I'm going to do levels. So this is generally going to change the levels so of the colors. In this case, make sure it's on RGB, by the way, here. I guess we're just going to bring this a little bit back. So there you go. I'm going to go with 216. I, by the way, also just rotated the character again so that it won't get in the way of the logo. And now above that, I'm actually going to add something else. I'm going to go to adjustments again. I'm just going to go to curves. So there you go. This will add like a curve. I'm just going to add like a point somewhere around here. And I'm just going to slightly... Nothing too crazy, just slightly change it. There we go, maybe like this. It especially affects the sky, as you can see a bit. And there we go. I don't think we need anything more than this. Just a nice little extra touch there. And now very important, we're gonna actually gonna add another adjustment here. Once again, I'm gonna do to I'm gonna go to hue saturation. Actually, let's move this a bit. Make sure we do colorize. I'm gonna put this all the way over here. Because obviously you want it to be red, or red-ish at least. And I guess around there is already good. We don't want it to be too dark of a red color. Don't want to overdo it. So I think around here is actually good. The lightness, we could slightly touch it. But like really a little bit. As you can see, that already looks pretty nice. We have a general red color going on here. So what I'm actually going to do now, and I'm going to do this above the rectangle. So in order to do that, you just have to select the rectangle. I'm actually going to go down here and make a new layer. Once again, make sure it's above the rectangle in case you're doing that. And now I'm going to zoom out. Just like 
two or three times or something. I'm gonna take the brush here, so you have the tool brush. Make sure it's pretty big as I have it right here. You can just click here and then put the size quite high, I would say. And also make sure it's on a soft brush like this. You know, that's not like the hardness isn't too high. Well, I have that zero right here. But that you make sure that you actually use like a, a blush like this. So then I'm gonna make sure it's on red here. Just make something like... The reddest red, I guess. And then here, you're just gonna aim somewhere underneath here. You might have seen this in the past. It's when you add like a glow to it. You don't want to overdo this. You know, just a little bit. Maybe just a little bit here. There you go. You don't really need more than that, I would say. Otherwise, it's gonna be too much. You know, we don't want to overdo it. Because we're gonna actually gonna add some extra filters. So some extra layers above it later. And where you actually see that this gets more accentuated. So we don't want to overdo this. So I think that actually looks good. So let's zoom back in. And so like now, as I always do, I like to write thumbnail tutorials. So it's going to do here. There you go. We have the word thumbnail already. Let's just make this white for the moment. And actually change this to a slimmer font. Like for example, Bison I have here. Looks quite nice. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty thin and basic, but I like it. So now let's actually type tutorial. What I think I'm actually going to do is actually rotate them and make sure that they like align with the bazooka right here. I think that from far that will actually look nice. Kind of use the same effect as here, you know, use some perspective to actually make it aiming more towards, let's say, the logo right here. That's what I'm going to do. So actually down here, I'm going to put the layers of thumbnail tutorial a bit lower here underneath the rectangle. I'm going to remove that for now. Actually going to give the word thumbnail a lighter red color here. Let's say something like this. I like that. And we could just keep tutorial white that do like kind of the opposite of uh, the logo right here. Even though this is more of a darker color red. So I'm actually going to first group these two layers. As you can see right here, if you go down here, you make sure you select one layer and I'm going to do the other one holding control and click that one as well. Then hold control and you do control G and this will make a group. So we can just call this, I don't know, text. But it's so very important so that you can actually change them together and we can always just individually select them to change them. So I guess for this time, I want to have them aligned like this. So I don't want to like have this one above the other one. I want to do something different and I'm going to just align them like this. Why not like just do it like this? Why not? You know, and then basically if you want to change both texts right here, we're going to double click on the group. As you can see right here, the layer style of everything will appear here and we can actually start to actually edit the text so i actually do a drop shadow here i'm actually gonna put this on quite a high red maybe not all the way but almost i'm actually gonna make the spread a bit bigger but especially the size not too much obviously let's say i don't want to do it yeah i don't want to overdo it let's say like 70 and maybe make the spread a bit bigger something like this so then let's click ok here now comes actually the trickier part i actually want to make this slightly bigger there we go, because actually when we're going to play with the perspective, the text generally gets a bit smaller or bigger, depends how you do the perspective. But I just want to make sure we're safe here, because it's quite a small font, so it still needs to be quite readable from afar. Even though it just says thumbnail tutorial, you know, in other cases, if you're going to type something different, it still needs to be quite visible in your thumbnails, so that people can also read the thumbnail. Because oftentimes people tend to watch the thumbnail first and then at the title of the video. Let's actually go with this then. So I'm going to take this together and actually start rotating it. Now, as I said before, make sure that you actually know what kind of settings you want. Because now I'm going to do something that I can go back. So now I have actually the text. So now that I kind of aligned it the way I wanted to, you know, aiming towards the logo right there. I just do this. There we go. And actually the best thing you can do in this kind of case is if you want to keep these like kind of settings, you know, like the shadow we did, the color on the word thumbnail, you can actually just go to this text. I'm actually going to duplicate it and then make a second group, basically. Now the, the name doesn't really matter because now you're gonna keep the group, hide the first group. So I'm just gonna do this little eye un icon here. It only hides the layer, nothing else. And so right now I just want to keep it like this. What I'm gonna do is actually make sure that both are selected or in this case, the group, and actually just click right here and do convert to smart object. Now, as I said, make sure that you have this copy because you can't redo this. You know, you, you, can, you can't change the settings later, like the outer glow or that I said the text color, for example. So make sure that you do this before or that you actually make a copy of what I just did, the group. So now do convert to smart object. As you can see, we have it right here. You can actually rename this uh, to thumbnail tutorial. This doesn't really matter. This is just for you to actually know uh, what layer is what. So as I said, we have in case, we just have the other one right here that we can still edit, you know, with all the layers in it. So once again, like we did with the other time, just make sure you click one of the corners right here. Then we do right click and we do perspective. And then, now you don't want to overdo this because it can quickly start to uh, form in a weird way. So don't want to go too fast with this. And if you do this more often, you kind of get the hang of it. Kind of understand how it actually works, what actually would be the best way to do this. Now, as I said, this is a pretty small font. So we're going to have a hard time making this jump out 
like a big text. So I actually like this, so I think I'm gonna keep it like this. It's nice actually for reference, it's in between the character's head right here and the logo. It's approximately the same distance here. It's also not overlaying the weapon too much, so we're pretty much in a good position keeping it like this. Okay, and there you go, if we are the border here and we watch, watch from afar, it looks pretty nice. As you can see, it's still pretty clear. Uh, I mean, and on the phone, it's gonna be a bit bigger, so you're gonna read it a bit better than, uh, than right now. As I said, don't forget to check sometimes to really look how it looks from afar, because not everybody sees the thumbnails on PC, obviously, also on the phone a lot. But now I'm pretty much gonna do the last thing here and I'm gonna actually add a group here so you can also just click this logo down in the right corner I'm just gonna call this filter you can really call it whatever you want really but I'm basically gonna add some more layers to make the general coloring of the thumbnail if you will better so I guess we can put this all the way on the top actually gonna to start with another curve right here so make sure it's in the there we go and this time I'm gonna set it to red actually so we can affect the reds more of the image because yeah and at the end of the day our image is red mostly so i mean you don't have to change a lot either it would be nice actually to overall make it a bit more red i guess towards here but now i'm gonna add something else yet to adjustments this time i'm gonna add exposure right here and this same you don't want to overdo it as you can see it gets very blurry right here so don't overdo these kind of things i guess i'm gonna start by bringing this up a bit I actually bring this a bit more up, but later on I will add something that will reduce the, uh, I guess, blurriness if you want to call it. Like for example, the gamma correction actually helps a bit with that. Do it around 75, that actually looks good. I actually want the blurriness to be a bit less. Then we're actually going to go yet back to adjustments here and add another levels. Okay, I guess the best thing to do here will bring it back a bit. Lighter, I guess, but really just a slight change. It's really going to be, you have to adapt it to the image you have. Now, this is, of course, multiple images, but you're basically going to have to adapt it a bit to the, the image in question and also the coloring that you're doing. Because it looks nice, you can see if a general color is in the thumbnail, like, for example, obviously red in this one. So really, this is nothing you can really copy. It's to whatever you are doing. Let's just bring down to right here, approximately. Then I'm going to go here and do a brightness and contrast and always retouch that a little bit. It's always nice, you can see brightness. Really does make it brighter or of course less bright. And then we can also touch on the contrast, which is also nice. I think some contrast sometimes really makes things look quite a lot better. In this case as well, I'm going to put this quite up here. Like I said, for your case, also just play around with these. Find something that you like. Just keep looking at the image and see like to which degree you'll actually like it. Okay, and there you go. I think there's one last thing that I actually forgot that I think now is going to look nice. Thinking back on it, is actually give this guy an outer glow. So he jumps out a little bit more, you know, because he doesn't, he isn't officially part of this background image here. He's an image apart. Let's see here. So these are the settings that we used for the thumbnail tutorial. I do want it to be a bit different on this guy. Maybe a bit. Let's see from afar here. Yeah, I think it's nice that we actually make this one right here. We don't want to do the spread too much. So that's not going to look very good. Make sure it's visible in the image and nothing more, you know. A pretty light drop shadow that we're giving him here. And there you go. Now just align the logo. I had to do it like a slight change here because I gave him an outer glow. So I just want to do like a slight change, I guess. And there we go. I like that. I'm going to keep it like this. So there you go, guys. As you can see, this is an example on how you could potentially make a GTA 5 thumbnail in this case. More for online, but whatever. Also, if you're doing campaign or anything. It's really, it's, this, it's the same idea. As you can see also towards the end, you can add some filters. Well, I like to call it filters, but it's basically some different adjustments. Things like the exposure you're working on, brightness and everything, shadows. So that's really what I did here. As you can see, this is the final result. But in any case, guys, thank you guys for watching. Please leave a like, it would be really nice. Subscribe, it would also be really nice. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye.